to Trending Week, and of course, okay, I'm going to tell you a story. I went to Comic Con, Chicago Comic Con this year. Harley Quinn is always popular. She is always popular, but not as popular as she is right now. And you sure know that any party that you go to this year, if you're going to a bar crawl, there is going to be at least a few Harley So in this tutorial, I am going to be going over the makeup for Harley Quinn in Suicide Squad. Now her makeup, the face makeup, is simple. It really is simple as hell. You do not need to be a good makeup artist to do it because it's really sloppy. So I'm going to be going over that and I know there's a bunch of tutorials already on that but I'm also going to be going over this right here. This isn't clothes, this is body paint. I decided I wanted to add a little something else to the tutorial because I didn't want it to be just like everybody else's because there's so many really good tutorials out there already on Harley Quinn's face makeup so it's like I'm going to body paint and show people how to body paint clothes while I do this. I do know most people, I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of people will not go out on Halloween with their body painted Harley Quinn costume. So I did a brunette Harley Quinn and I'm going to show you why right now. I bought this Harley Quinn wig. First of all, it looks really, really funny so I took the ties off of it because, oh my gosh, she looks terrible. It was from um, Amazon so I took the, the ties that gave it pigtails because it looks better down. But some people just don't look good as a blonde and I'm one of those people. I do not look good as a blonde so I was like I'm doing a brunette Harley Quinn. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Please give it a thumbs up if you like it. Make sure you come back tomorrow for some more trending tutorials and now let's begin the video. I feel like I'm going blind. I can't do this. Quick side note, you might notice that my left eye during this tutorial starts getting redder and more watery and then it starts to look funny. While filming, my eye was hurting a lot and eventually it went from being white to red and then a bubble formed. So a few hours later, I actually ended up in the ER and it turned out I had a cut abrasion and I have no idea what cut me, neither does my doctor. But yeah, I'm better now. So you can start to look off by mixing a white cream makeup with your foundation color. If you could find a white foundation, you could go ahead and use that, but they're very, very, very hard to find. You don't want to use white paint. If you've seen the movie, her skin isn't like a white opaque color. It more so looks like she has very light skin and she has a wash of white makeup over her face, but it's not like a starch white. Of course, it depends on the Harley Quinn you're trying to go for, but if you're trying to go for something more true to the movie, you just want to do a wash of white on your face even if you have very light skin use a white cream makeup you don't want to use like a water activated white face paint if you're trying to make yourself look like the Harley Quinn movie version now you're gonna start noticing slowly throughout the tutorial my eyes gonna start turning redder and redder and gonna look like I'm in more and more paint so just an FYI for the eyebrows, you just want to fill them in very slightly. Basically groom your eyebrows and you can add a little bit of color, but you're not going for an Instagram brow here. Now take a matte pink eyeshadow and apply that on top of the eyelid and then you're going to bring it down so it looks like the eyeshadow is just gliding off of the skin. And then you're going to take a blue eyeshadow and you're going to apply that on top of the right eye and do the exact same thing. So you just want it to look messy. Don't forget to bring that color along the lower lash line. I wanted my makeup to look a little bit more messy so I took a black eyeshadow and just dabbed it around both eyes to give it a more messy appearance. Then you want to take a liquid eyeliner and line your lash line. You can create a wing if you want to, it's all up to you. I created a wing, but I made it very sloppy so that it would look messy. Now you can apply mascara to your top and bottom lashes. When I applied the mascara to the lower lashes at the outer corner of each eye, I uh, rubbed the mascara onto the skin to make that area look dirty as well. You want to go for like a messy vibe. Now use a red lip liner to outline and fill in your lips. You can top it off with the red lipstick. I didn't because I just prefer to use red lip liner. To paint on Harley's tattoos. I'm using a water activated face paint to do this. You can use liquid eyeliner. You can use an eyeliner pencil. Eyeliner pencil actually looks the most like a tattoo, but the easiest for me is face paint. You're going to paint on a heart and then the tattoo that says rotten that is along her jawline. The thing is when you're painting that on, you have to paint the letters on backwards, if that makes sense, um, so that the letters photograph correctly 
on camera. So the thing is, I didn't want to do that, especially with my eyes hurting, it takes a long time. So I ended up just flipping the video footage. But if you're taking pictures, if you're filming this, you want to make sure that you paint the letters on backwards. So that's it for the face makeup. I know most of you guys will stop there when it comes to Halloween, but I wanted to paint on the clothing just because there's so many Harley Quinn tutorials out there teaching you how to do the same thing. It's very simple makeup, so I wanted to paint on the clothing to add an extra oomph to my tutorial. So I know lots of you guys won't do this, but if you're into body painting, maybe this will help you out a little bit if you're deciding to body paint clothing. So what I did was take my black paint and I painted on the lettering for the necklace where it says put in and I also painted on the strap for it. Then I go in with a gold paint and I fill in the lettering. The Try to do the 3D effect with the letters. I'm not going to explain that because the tutorial will be too long, but just Google it and I'm sure you'll be able to find something. It's really simple. And then the gold paint that I used, it was a metallic paint from Wolf, so it already added a lot of the shine that is needed to make the necklace look a little bit more blingy. After I've done that, I take my white paint and I start filling it all in. And it's not a necklace. I don't know why I'm saying necklace. It's a choker. Once I got the white part painted on, I mix a gray color together and I use it to paint the top portion of the strap, the part that's going between the lettering because you want a shadow there to make it look like it's more popping out than it actually is. And then I go ahead and I go back with the black paint and I add more shadowing behind each letter to make it look like it's popping out a little bit more. Moving on to the clothes, which is the most complicated of it all. You're going to mix together a deep red color. So kind of like a burgundy if you want. And you're gonna use it to outline the collar and to outline the color of the jacket. You want a dark red color here because it's gonna add some shadows to the clothes. And you're gonna need that to make it look like the jacket is lying on top of the t-shirt. Use your gold paint to paint on the zippers. Now we're going to start adding base colors to the jacket and the t-shirt. You're going to take your red paint and you're going to use it to fill in the top portion of the t-shirt. Then you're going to use it to create the lines that are on top of the collar. So three lines on each side of the collar. Don't forget to paint the three red stripes that are on the forearm of each arm. And you don't want to forget to paint the stripes that go down the side of each arm as well. There are gold stripes that go down there, so you just use red paint to um, outline those stripes. Then you can go ahead and fill in the red side of your jacket with the red paint. Now use your blue paint to paint the blue side of the jacket. Now, I use two different blue paints, a dark blue and just a regular blue color, and I was mixing my brush between both of them so that when I painted the blue side of the jacket, there were areas that were lighter and areas that were darker, which added the perfect highlight and shading that I needed with just one swipe of the brush. I ended up shading and highlighting eventually, and you're going to see that some more, but this is just like a simple way to do it. Then I go ahead and take my deep red color. The deep red color I mix together by using black and red paint. And then I use that to paint where the t-shirt is. It fades from a red color to a deeper red. So I have to paint where the white part of the t-shirt and the red part meets with that deep red color. And then I start using it to add shading on top of the red side of the jacket. The blue side, I already had the paints to do it. So that's why I was just mixing them real easily together. But the red side, I had to specifically make this deep red color, so I couldn't really mix my deep red with the red paint and do that all at once. Now go ahead and use the white paint as the base color for the bottom portion of the t-shirt. You want to go back with your deep red paint and use it to blend the line between 
the white and red a little better so it doesn't have that like weird abrupt end but when you apply the red paint again you just dab your brush on top of it because if you blend it too much it's going to create a pink color you don't want that now go ahead and go back with your black paint and paint on daddy's little monster onto the t-shirt now the t-shirt is supposed to be under the jacket so you don't want to paint on the entire letter ring you kind of want some of the d not to be showing maybe some of the y not to be showing um maybe some letters just totally missing from the t-shirt itself so that the jacket looks like it's lying on top of the t-shirt There's nothing special to do with the lettering. You could just stare at a picture of the shirt and then know what you're supposed to do. After I've done that, I went back with the deep red color and I did a little bit more shading in the inside of the jacket where the t-shirt meets the jacket. Um, and I just did that with the red paint because it looks more natural than using a really harsh black paint. Now go back with your white paint and use it to paint the white parts of the stripes that are on the collar and then on the forearms. And then you want to use a black paint to start painting some detailing where the zipper is. So just some little lines that make the zipper look more like a zipper. And then I go back with my deep red paint and I paint some lines going through the red lines that are on the forearm. So lines that are going horizontal so that it looks a little bit more like that sweater material. Now those are like very minor details and things that you couldn't see but I could and it was just to make it look more like a jacket. Next, I'm going to be doing a lot of shading and highlighting. To shade, I'm using black eyeshadow. To highlight, I'm using white cream makeup. I'm bouncing back, back and forth between the both a lot, so I'm not going to be really specific here, but you can see what I'm doing. So I'm using the black eyeshadow to create wrinkles on top of the jacket. And to shade where the collar is to make the jacket and the collar look more lifted. To shade where the jacket meets the t-shirt, just kind of blending that shadow out toward the t-shirt to make it look more realistic so that it, you know it fades out because that's what a shadow does it's gonna fade out it's not just going to be everywhere and really 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 you know opaque and then I use the white highlight white cream makeup to highlight the jacket where I applied some black shadow to highlight those wrinkles and then to highlight any area that I want to look more raised. That's what highlighting does. It makes an area look more raised and then uh, or stand out more and then shading makes something look a little bit more pushed back. Um, so yeah, just lots of highlighting and um, shading. Finally, I did some last minute shading and highlighting using my face paint, my deep red face paint for the shading and then my white face paint for the highlighting, but not too much because it's hard to blend out face paint. Just a little bit and then I use my finger kind of to rub it out or I just apply it very lightly with my hand. So that's it for the tutorial. Thank you so much you guys for watching. Every single one of you who has been watching these videos, I work really hard on them and lately it's been a struggle for me to grow this channel. It's growing in subscribers but in terms of views it's really going down. So I really appreciate everybody who takes the time to watch these things. So thank you so much. I love you guys and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.